From the Rainbow Theatre to the UK and the world. The journey of faith of the campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai. I came here with my family uh, to see all the events and I find it really beautiful. It's nice. Today in Green we have our Liberty Local event, which is a free event for the community where we open our doors for those who need to provide entertainment, to provide food for those who are struggling. It's important that an event like this takes place in Wood Green because we know that there are many families who are struggling. There are many young people who are going down the wrong track and we're here to provide an opportunity for those. We have people here, volunteers, who have also been in situations where they need help. They got the help here and now today they're here to provide for those in the community. Many times people are going through a lot and they need someone to talk to. They need someone to listen to what they are going through so they can also receive help that they need. I volunteer because I know the impact that the Help Centre has had on not only my life but on other people's lives and giving others the opportunity to receive the help, the guidance through the various groups, the various projects is very beneficial and that's something that we want to share and want to give to others. I was invited by your wonderful team of volunteers to come and see. It's great to see people helping each other and especially in challenging times, many of the issues that were faced during the pandemic still sustain on today. I think it impacts the community in a big way. Um, that there are people out there who care and, and they have a place to come to. Well, it's really important that community spaces, churches, schools do open their doors to let the community in and let them know what they're doing um, and also provide those support back to the community uh, so that, you know, we can become a more cohesive and happy society. This event is for everyone. This event is for you. We look forward to seeing you. Join us. You're more than welcome. A very good evening to all of you, wherever you may be connected. May the power of God reach you wherever you are. Tonight, we are going to be speaking about the greatest force in the world. But just like everything that is positive has a negative, just like light, there is darkness. Just like everything has usually an opposite. Even though faith is indeed the greatest power that exists, there is also the danger of something that can neutralize faith. And today, you will see what that is and how you can overcome it. Welcome to one more journey of faith towards Mount Sinai. We are going to watch now a testimony of someone who saw the power of God in her love life. And by the way, speaking of love life, let us know in the comments, you who were in love therapy tonight, what did you learn? What was the one piece of information that you're taking away with you to build a better love life? Write a very brief paragraph, you who are here in person, you who are in the churches outside London. What did God speak to you when you took part of love therapy? Let's watch the testimony. We'll come back in just a moment. In the past, I had so much hatred towards my father and men in general, including my brother. And mainly this uh, came from witnessing my father's behavior towards my mother. And I thought this um, hatred that I carried actually changed the way I thought about love life. And I didn't think I could have a happy love life. Growing up um, from the young age, uh, from as far as I can remember, I used to see my father going out, getting drunk 
And then when he would come home, for no reason, he would just start beating my mother up. He used to just come home, be angry, and my mom would actually prepare dinner for him. And he would make, she would make sure that everything is ready for him. She would make sure that us children were out of the way so that he doesn't take the anger out of us. And he would still beat my mom up every day. Witnessing the, that kind of violence from my dad towards my mom, it made me so angry. It also made me question about love because I saw my mom praying for my father every day, even after he beat her up. When we were going to bed, my mother would collect us all children to make prayers before we go to bed. And she would actually finish the prayer by praying for my dad, asking God to bless my dad, to forgive my dad. And I never used to understand. So I carried this anger towards him. I carried this grudge towards him and all the men. I remember I never even used to speak to my brother because I associated my father's behavior towards my brother. I put the blame on him as well. Growing up, I didn't trust men and I didn't want to get into a relationship and experience the same experience that my mom did. And I, I remember I made a vow to myself that I would never go into marriage and experiencing the same situation that mom experienced. The hatred that I had towards my, bro uh, my dad when my, my dad passed away when I was 12 years old, I still carried that hatred within me and I still hated my brother. So going into a relationship, I had such a low self-esteem because of this hatred. I didn't realize I was affecting me inside. So I would get into relationships and even in relationship, I didn't want to be told off. If somebody, like let's say the person I'm dating did not agree with me, I felt like, okay, the next step they'll get violent with me. So I would actually break up the relationship immediately, or I would just stop ca calling them or even contacting them. And I would just disappear. And uh, it came to a point where I didn't understand what was going on within me, but I knew that there is something going on because I knew that I had hatred towards my brother. I knew that I hated my brother, but I could not connect that that what I was hating my brother was because of what I witnessed with my dad and that I was associating my dad's behavior with my brother. One day I was invited to attend the UCKG church. At first I was hesitant, I didn't want to attend and then when I started attending I started re listening and hearing the messages about how we tend to carry um, baggages with us, roots which would have affected us from childhood experiences. So I started to attend the chain of prayer services. I started to attend um, love therapy. But in the time that I was attending the church, I used to hear the message about Holy Spirit. You need to have the Holy Spirit to be transformed from within. And then while I was listening to these messages, and then I started realizing that I was carrying the baggage with me of hatred towards my dad, towards my brother, even though my dad had passed away, but that was still affecting me. And it was affecting my spiritual life, my spiritual growth. So when I actually understood that I need to actually surrender everything to God, the hatred that I had towards my brother, towards men, I needed to surrender that. I called my brother, that was the first thing I did. I called my brother and I asked for forgiveness. And from then on, I just started um, reading the books of the church. I started seeking the Holy Spirit more. There was a point pastor used to say, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, please come forward. That was the day I just said, you know what, my God, I want your spirit. I don't care how people would look at me. I don't care who is going to say what. I just want your spirit. So I went forward. I didn't want to leave the altar without his spirit. And I was determined that I was going to get his spirit on that day because I had stripped myself of everything. I knew then that God had, had accepted me because I poured out everything about me. The pride, the last thing to leave me was the pride. So I took that out, I stripped that out of me, and I went to the altar, and just God gave me his spirit, gave me his spirit on that moment. After climbing the altar, presenting my sacrifice for that campaign of faith, I got down and I knew God had answered my prayer, had answered my request. It wasn't gonna be immediately, but I knew that I needed to be patient. And then six months later, I started talking to my husband, who was already an assistant in the church. When I started talking with Jawan, uh, we became close friends and um, as time goes by I noticed that when I go to work I I start thinking about her. I never used to think about her but now and again you know thoughts would pop up in my head and then I would call her friend over a day, over a day vice versa with her and gradually naturally we became close and then we start dating and I was enjoying that moment, you know, getting to know her, getting to know her likes, her dislikes, vice versa, she getting to know my likes, my, dis my dislikes. One other thing that was very interesting is that we both have the Holy Spirit and I, 
I remember there are times when we're talking and we always involve God in it. Whatever we're going to do, whether we pray together, we fast together, we do purpose together. And it was very interesting because I know that there's days when, I've, when I'm down, she's there to uplift me, vice versa. And it was, for me, it was very vital and it was very important. Today, I'm married to my husband. We've been married for four years now. We are happy in our marriage. We understand about communicating with each other. We know that we're going to have ups and downs in terms of disagreements, but we know how to tackle those disagreements with the Holy Spirit guiding us. We have, um, I have a good job that I thank God for that job, which allows me to actually serve him. And also we just bought a house this year, so we're happy in our marriage. I have no hatred towards men. I have good relationship with my brother, with my whole family. And also I have no low self-esteem. I'm confident with who I am. I know where I am with God. With everything that I've conquered, I know if I didn't have the Holy Spirit, I would not have these things. And also most of these things, they're temporarily. And the only thing that is permanent is my salvation and the Holy Spirit. And I know without the Holy Spirit, I will not be here today. I will not be this confident woman who's speaking today. Is your life like this? Like a person in a maze. Deaths, a failed love life, a risky health condition, and so many other problems that are leaving you with no way out. With so many frustrations in your life, nothing has gone right for a long time. With this in mind, for the first time, we have consecrated some oil in the place where the Church of Philadelphia was located to which the Lord said, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. This Friday, as a symbol of the presence of the Lord Jesus in your life, bring a single rose to be anointed. We shall determine that wherever you place this, all the doors will open, and those doors that are open will not be closed by evil. Come to take part in the Friday of the Blessed Rose with the Oil of the Open Doors at 7.30 p.m. at 232 Seven Sisters Road, Finsbury Park, London, N4, 3NX, or at your nearest Universal Church. What a wonderful testimony, right? Someone who never believed in men or that men could be faithful, that men could be good. And today she has a marriage that is a blessing. And speaking of marriage, we ask you to write here on the chat what God spoke to you in love therapy. We have some really nice comments here. Uh, Benedicta Candala said, what I learned from love therapy today was the importance of understanding where the other person is coming from, as opposed to judging them on the face of their behavior. Absolutely, very important. We learned this from the example of Bishop Alvaro and Missalini's story. It's one of the things that Missalini said. She understood why um, there were certain kind of behaviors there in her marriage. Uh, Elena wrote, to make a mashed potato. I think that was a very small part of what Elena said, but... We get the idea, Lena. You you got it. Um, let me see a few more. Uh, Noah said, I learned from love therapy to focus on bringing peace to my future relationship because it depends on me. I imagine this is a single person. Future relationship, absolutely. Peace depends on us. Um, maybe just read one or two more. Sarah from Peckham. Love therapy was very straightforward. Um, fight to be the peacemaker, and that will require a lot of humbleness and looking at what I can change within myself to bring peace. Absolutely. Um, one more. Uh, 
Leah from Finsbury Park. In marriage, you are bound to have some kind of problems or different kinds of problems, but it's about understanding how to deal with it and work together with God to solve the problem. Extremely important. So we were saying that you can't expect a marriage, and we've seen examples of this in the pastors and their wives, you can't expect a marriage to be perfect from the get-go. And actually, to be perfect, never. There is no such thing as a perfect marriage. They are blessed marriages. But you start with learning you know, to adapt and improve. Now, I want to speak about Moses and something that happened there because you will, you will learn, you will understand the betrayal of the people of Israel in a completely different way. Pay attention to this. This is very important. Hebrews 3, verse 16 says, For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. I believe unbelief is the last thing that perhaps came to your mind when you considered the mistake, the rebellion that the people of Israel committed. But if you start to look at the track record of the people of Israel in Egypt, of leave after having left Egypt, you will start to see that unbelief was at the root of many of the actions. In fact, I've, I have here with me tonight, Pastor Joshua. Please, Pastor Joshua, join me here from our church today in Catford. And we see, Pastor Joshua, that when the people standing in front of the Red Sea started to panic, thinking that they were going to die, unbelief was manifested there, right? Unbelief. When the people said, oh, we have no water to drink. Where's the water? At least in Egypt, we had some water. We're going to die of thirst. Unbelief. Unbelief. So we see that many of their reactions, we can say was down to this torn belief. We can even say doubt. And we see, Pastor Joshua, that if faith is the greatest weapon on earth, there's nothing more powerful than faith. And if faith is the weapon that connects us to God, then doubt is the weapon that connects people to the devil. Yes, Bishop, because doubt feeds unbelief. And when I do not believe, it is like a, a reverse effect. The more I doubt, more unbelief, it is hard for me to believe in what God said. I may not understand when God said, oh, we are going to cross, you are going to pass through this Red Sea. They did not know how would that happen. When God said, you are going to have water to drink and the water will come out from this rock. They did not understand. I may not understand, but I cannot doubt. I cannot manifest. I cannot have an attitude that will provoke the unbelief from my side. Bishop. Yeah, and today, Pastor Josh, is the same because we see that, for example, it's unbelief, it's doubt that prevents the person from surrendering their life on the altar. It's doubt that prevents the person to present the perfect sacrifice on the altar. It's doubt that prevents the person from leaving, for example, a lover or an abusive relationship because the person says, well, it may be an abusive relationship, but it's better than being alone. And if I leave this person and I don't find someone else as quick as I think. And these doubts prevent the person from two things. First, presenting their life completely on the altar as a sacrifice and consequently from receiving the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Because if I come to the altar already with doubt, the Holy Spirit cannot descend upon me, upon that person. Because again, what connects me to God is not doubt, it's faith. Yes, Bishop. Faith is the, the connection that caused the impossible to happen. Though, as you mentioned very well, Bishop. Sometimes a person thinks of... What my life will be if I do that after this? It's by faith. The certain that will bring to existence 
what does not exist. And that's the power that make a person to see the way that God wants and act upon. On the other side, without, they still thinking about, and if I do that, it not happen. Because they choose to doubt. Mm -hmm. The doubt is the choice of the person on holding into, as you mentioned very well, I am suffering this relationship, but I'm still better being suffering with someone than to be yeah. without. That's right. We're, we're going to talk in a moment to Pastor um, Matthew, there from our church in, uh, in Glasgow. Because the thing is, doubt is a universal problem. Remember Peter. Peter, he jumped out of the boat to walk on the water and meet the Lord Jesus. And he did walk on water. A lot of people forget that fact because initially he didn't sink at all. Initially, he began, the Bible says he began to walk on the waters. But his heart in that moment was filled with unbelief, with doubt, and he sank. And today is the same every time a person doubts. For example, how many times people, for example, they have the ability to do well in a job. But they go for a job interview filled with doubts and they can't speak. They, they, they freeze. Maybe you, dear friend, you, you are capable of, of being very successful in different things. But your doubts prevent you from doing that. And perhaps the worst of all is that your doubts are preventing you from reaching the altar. Maybe you are close to the altar. You are thinking Sunday now in the day of the campaign of Mount Sinai, in the day that we conclude the fast of Daniel, I will go to the altar with my whole life. But your doubt is standing in the way. Pastor Matthew, unless the person overcomes the doubt, because it's okay to have doubts. Listen, everybody has doubts, but you have to overcome them. If I tell you that doubts don't come to me, I'd be lying. Any person doubts come to them. But in that moment, faith has to override the doubts. And you may have many question marks. You may have many doubts in your mind, but your doubts cannot keep you away from the altar. Faith has to override those doubts. I believe, Pastor Matthew, there in Glasgow, we have the same problem. It's a universal problem. Exactly, Bishop. And God said to Moses, come now. But Moses said, who am I? And then God said, I will certainly be with you. And Bishop, those who are watching us now, God is speaking the same. Remove this doubt. I, I will certainly be with you. Your life will be transformed. You're going to be filled up with the Holy Spirit. What these, these people cannot do, Bishop, is to doubt. And we are here to pray. And this person who's going to pray with us, they're going to receive strength, this assurance that what you will present on the altar this Sunday or tomorrow, God will answer them. God will certainly be with this person. That's right. Let's speak now to Pastor uh, Fabio there from our church in Peckham. Pastor Fabio, I, be I believe this verse, the, the last verse we read is very key. It says, we see that they could not enter. That means the promised land. They could not enter the promised land because of unbelief. And how many people, Pastor Fabio, today, they don't receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit because they doubt that they will receive Him. We're not worthy of the Holy Spirit, but we have to believe that God promised. And God is not a man that He should lie. If God said that He would give the Holy Spirit, why should I doubt? If I go to the altar with my life placed there on the altar, God wants to give me the greatest gift that He has to give to anyone that is His Spirit. Yes, Bishop. Good evening, everyone. It's part of the sacrifice of for not doubt, because doubt brings people closer to the devil. But belief, faith brings people closer to God. So if people who are watching us right now, they make a decision to believe, to place all their faith, all their strength on the altar, there is no place better than the altar to be closer to God. And for sure, the fire, the Holy Spirit will come and take place within the person. But 
as long as a doubt is there, it's going to be impossible for the Holy Spirit to find a dwelling within the person. And many people struggle in the church to overcome doubts because they themselves make things difficult for them by listening the voices all around. If they listen only to the word of God, they can overcome these doubts and see the Holy Spirit taking place within them. That's right. Uh, it's, it's true what you said there, that overcoming these doubts is part of our sacrifice. We are going to pray right now, but I'm going to read again this last verse. So we say that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And we know here the Bible is talking about the promised land. What God wants to give you, that Satan does not want you to have. And that's why he throws, he bombards perhaps you with doubts to come to the altar, to surrender your life. What Satan doesn't want you to have is the Spirit of God. Because the day you receive the Spirit of God, you'll be out of reach for the devil. Are your doubts separating you from the altar? Are your doubts preventing you to reach the altar with your whole life? Then, my friend, this Sunday, let your faith be the bridge between you and the altar. Let's talk to God right now. Let's talk to God. It's time to pray. My Lord, any person who says that they've never struggled with doubts is definitely a liar, no matter who that person is, because doubts come to everyone. But you have given us a power that is greater than any doubt that we can have, greater than any fear, than any unbelief that a person can have, and that that power is called faith. The bridge between any man or woman and God. My father, last night in the program, someone wrote in the comments, what if I don't feel that I'm worthy to have my prayer heard? And the truth is that you are eager to hear our prayer. You are eager to hear our voice. And you will, my God. Those who break through their doubts to make their way to the altar and lay down on the altar their lives, their all, their fears, their sin, their ornaments and say, my God, here I am. In that moment, your spirit will descend upon them because today, you no longer want to give us just a promised land. You want to give us the promised presence. And who knows, like that person who wrote on the chat last night, my Lord, there are many who feel that they will never deserve your spirit, that they will never receive your spirit. And who knows this person has struggled with these thoughts because they are actually very close to receiving your spirit. And I pray, my Father, that you do the transformation, the change that will be permanent because any other change that is not done by your spirit will not be permanent. But when your spirit abides, dwells, lives in someone, the transformation will be forever. My Father, we bless right now those who are connected with us and we determine, my God, the faith to overcome their fears and their doubts is already inside of them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Of this you can be sure. Doubts everybody has, but the power to overcome the doubts is already inside of you, and that is your faith. Tomorrow will be the last program, the last Be Inspired before the end of the fast of Daniel, 
and before the end of the campaign of Mount Sinai. Prepare yourself. Do not break this chain because we are going still on our journey to Mount Sinai and we will go until the end. We'll see you tomorrow in the church. Don't forget to bring your rose. We are going to bless the rose in the service for you to take home and we are going to use our faith to break the shackles of the devil. Until then, may God bless you abundantly. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. From the Rainbow Theatre to the UK and the world, the journey of faith of the campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai.